Let's say we're asked to factor the following expressions by using grouping as a technique. For the very first problem, we notice that 3 and negative 7 don't have a GCF. There are no numbers that divide both 3 and 7 perfectly. Next, we turn our gaze to the variables. Both terms do not have an A or a B, but they both do have an X. So that is our GCF. That is the greatest common factor to both terms. Whenever we write down the GCF, the first task is always to open parentheses immediately after it. After we've done that, we figure out what goes inside the parenthesis block by dividing the terms by the GCF. So here we divide 3ax by x, the GCF, and we get 3a inside the parentheses. Similarly, when we divide negative 7bx by x, we get negative 7b. Because there are no more terms, we close parentheses here, and that is our solution. We can check this very quickly by simply distributing the x back into this binomial. x times 3a will give us 3ax. Negative 7b times x will give us negative 7bx. For the next problem, we notice that 5 and a negative 10 have a 5 in common. 5 divides both 5 and negative 10 perfectly. Additionally, they also both have a p that they can share. So the greatest common factor here happens to be 5p. How do we know what goes inside the parentheses? We divide the terms by the GCF. 5p squared divided by 5p will give us just p. 10p, or negative 10p rather, divided by 5p will give us a negative 2. Because there are no more terms, we close parentheses and that's it. For the next problem, 12 and negative 5 don't have any factors in common. So we move our, our vision to m to the 4th and m to the 12th. Well, there are four m's that can be yanked out of both terms. So we factor out an m to the 4th. When we divide 12m to the 4th by m to the 4th, we get just 12. So that goes inside the parentheses. And then similarly, when we divide negative 5m to the 12th by m to the 4th, we get negative 5m to the 8th. Remember that when bases are same and we're dividing, we subtract the exponents, the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. For the next problem, we notice that it's not a single number and a single variable, but the entire expression 5p minus 6r that's present in both terms. So we factor that out. That entire complex is our GCF, 5p minus 6r. How do we know what goes inside? Well, what happens if I divide this big term by 5p minus 6r? The 5p minus 6r will cancel with the one I'm dividing by, leaving behind just 2a. So when I open parentheses, I write 2a in front of it. Then, when I divide 7d times 5p minus 6r by 5p minus 6r, the two terms will cancel, leaving behind a negative 7d. So that's what I place at the end. Because there are only two terms and no additional terms to factor the GCF out of, the problem is over. We can close the parentheses. For the next example, we see x times a plus 2b plus y times the same quantity minus z times the same quantity. So here, hopefully you're able to see that a plus 2b, the quantity that keeps repeating, is our GCF. How do we know what's left behind after we open parentheses? Well, we divide each of these three terms by a plus 2b, the GCF. From the first term, we're just going to be left over with an x. Then we move to the middle term, y times a plus 2b divided by the GCF will just give us a y. And then finally, the negative z times a plus 2b, when divided by a plus 2b, will just give us the negative z. The next problem, or the next two problems, are, are relatively interesting because on the surface, or at face value, they don't seem to have anything in common. And we're partially right to think that. However, with m minus n, we could try to factor out a negative 1. And when we do, how do we know what goes inside? Well, we can divide each term by the GCF, 
and that's what we place inside the parentheses. So if we were to divide m by negative 1, we would get negative m. So we would open parentheses and place negative m inside. Similarly, when we divide negative n by negative 1, we would get a positive n. A negative divided by a negative is always a positive. So that's what would go inside. Another way that this can be exploited, and will be later on in the course, is we can rearrange these terms. So instead of writing negative m plus n, you can rewrite this as n minus m. You'll also notice that I dropped off the 1 here. That 1 is superfluous. It, it's unnecessary, although if you put it there, nothing wrong happens. So you can rewrite this expression as just that if you wish to. This is a very nice nifty trick that we can use frequently in mathematics. Similarly, for the last expression, again, there's seemingly nothing in common, but we always want to keep this trick handy. Well, what happens if we factor out a negative one? If we do, we divide each term, a plus b, by negative one. a divided by negative one yields negative a, and finally, b divided by negative 1 yields negative b. And that's it. Now, in this case, we could have rearranged it, but we don't get any better symmetry out of it. So even if we were to rearrange it, it would just be negative b minus a, which isn't any better looking than negative a minus b. Here, the reason why we switched the terms around was because typically by convention, we want the negative terms to appear later or after the positive terms. So that's why this rearrangement is sometimes appropriate, although there's nothing inherently wrong with rewriting this to be negative 1 times negative b minus a. They're still the same exact algebraic expression.